When people think of Kenya, the first thing that comes to their minds is usually safari. Kenya is the world's leading safari destination, and safaris there are incredible. I absolutely love them. But what if I told you that there's much more to this country than safari? What if I told you about really interesting things about its culture, its history, and its other natural wonders? In this video, I'll tell you some really cool facts about Kenya, and I'm willing to bet that you don't know all of these, so stick around if you want to learn more about this lovely country. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Lauda, and I've spent the past few years traveling around Africa and Europe. So if you like travel content, whether it's travel vlogs or more informational videos like this one, make sure you subscribe and you hit the bell for notifications. So first things first, where does the name Kenya come from? So the name Kenya comes from the word Kirinyaga, which is the Kikuyu name for Mount Kenya. At 5,199 meters, this is not only the highest mountain in Kenya, but it's also the second highest mountain in Africa after Tanzania's Kilimanjaro. It is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its incredible nature, but also for its cultural significance. The area around the mountain is the traditional homeland of the Kikuyu, Embu, Meru, and Kamba communities, and the mountain is sacred to them. It is not exactly clear how the word Kirinyaga ended up becoming Kenya, but one account says that Kirinyaga means mountain of whiteness because of the mountain's snow-capped peak. But when the British arrived in Kenya, they couldn't really pronounce the word Kirinyaga, so it slowly morphed into Kenya and it ended up becoming the name of the country. So on to the next fact. Did you know that the shield represented in the Kenyan flag is a Maasai shield? The Kenyan flag has four colors in it. Black, which represents the people of Kenya. Red, which represents the bloodshed and the fight for independence. Green, which represents the fertility of the land. And white, which represents peace. In the middle of the flag, there's a shield and two crossed spears, which symbolize unity and defense of freedom. And the shield in particular is a shield typical of the ones used by the Maasai tribe. The Maasai are one of the most well-known tribes in Africa, and they're excellent warriors. They were feared by the colonial authorities, and they defended the land very fiercely. If you want to know more about the Maasai and their culture, I actually have a YouTube video about my experience visiting a Maasai village. I'll make sure I put it on the screen and I'll link it in the description as well. On to fact number three. Kenya is an extremely multicultural country. I've already mentioned the Maasai, the Kikuyu, the Embu, the Meru, and the Kamba, but there are many more communities and tribes that originate or live within the borders of Kenya. This has also made Kenya a multilingual country. While its official languages are Swahili and English, up to 68 languages are spoken in the country. Now bear in mind, you have to take this number with a pinch of salt, since different sources say different numbers ranging from 42 to 68. But the point is, Kenya has lots of languages and lots of cultures. It is no surprise then that Kenya is known as the cradle of humankind, but this name is not actually due to its incredible cultural diversity, rather because it was the place where humanity originated. It is crazy to think that, in a way, we all came from here. Every human who ever lived can trace their lineage to an ancestor who walked in this land. Specifically, the name Cradle of Humankind was given to Kenya because of a number of human fossils found at Kubifora, a site in Sibiloi National Park on the banks of Lake Turkana in the north of the country. According to researchers, they have learned more about early humans from these fossils than from any other fossil found on Earth. Since we're already on the topic of Kenyan history, did you know that the oldest and best preserved Swahili settlement in East Africa is Lamu Old Town in Northern Kenya? Lamu Old Town is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it has been continuously inhabited for over 700 years, making it the oldest permanent settlement in Kenya. Built in coral stone and mangrove timber, Lamu Old Town has become an important center of study for Swahili and Islamic cultures, and it was at one point the most important trade port in the East African coast. And did you know that Kenya is one of the places where Swahili culture and Swahili language originated? So all throughout the East African coast, from southern Somalia through Kenya and Tanzania, all the way to northern Mozambique, there were a series of trade posts such as Lamu, Malindi or Mombasa that traded extensively with other ports in the Indian Ocean. Through the Indian Ocean trade, these ports and others in Tanzania and Somalia traded regularly with India, Persia, Arabia, Portugal, the United Kingdom, and even occasionally with places as far away as China, Indonesia, and the Philippines. 
All of this trade gave way to the formation of the Swahili culture, which is a mix of traditional African cultures as well as cultures from India, Europe, and the Arabian Peninsula, and to the Swahili language, which is now one of the official languages of Kenya. This region of the Swahili coast is also well known for its spectacular nature. There are some incredible beaches here, such as the Ani Beach or the ones in Watamu and Kilifi, which look heavenly and are very popular with tourists. But what lies below the surface is even more beautiful. Kenya has some of the most impressive coral reefs in Africa, and they are protected in three national parks. Kisitempunguti Marine National Park, Watamu Malindi Marine National Park, and Kiunga Marine Reserve. But Kenya's most impressive nature is found further inland, and it is the Great Rift Valley. The Great Rift Valley is part of an intercontinental ridge system that runs through Kenya from north to south. The branch of the East African Rift that passes through Kenya starts in Tanzania and ends in Ethiopia. In a few million years, this rift will cause the separation of East Africa from the rest of the continent. The valley is bordered by escarpments to the east and west, and it is a chain of several lakes and volcanoes, such as Lakes Baringo, Nakuru, and Turkana, and volcanoes such as Mount Longonot. The geography in the Great Rift Valley has allowed wildlife to flourish, and here you can find some of Kenya's best national parks, such as the Maasai Mara, Lake Nakuru National Park, and Amboseli. As well as the animals that you can find here, you can also see the lakes, escarpments, and immense grasslands that characterize the geography of the Rift Valley. Speaking of national parks, did you know that Kenya has 50 national parks? This is absolutely wild for a country of this size, and a huge percentage of the country is protected. Some of Kenya's parks are very famous throughout the world, such as the Maasai Mara, Tsavo, or Samburu, and are very popular with tourists who want to go on safari. Other parks, such as Ruma National Park, Mount Elgon, or the national parks on Lake Turkana, are far less well-known, but still receive some tourists. Kenya's national parks are not only essential to protect the country's landscapes and biodiversity, they're also essential to protect Kenya's economy. You see, the tourism sector accounts for roughly 10% of Kenya's economy, and in 2021, tourism contributed 5.4 billion US dollars to Kenya's GDP. While not all of this comes from people traveling to Kenya's national parks, a very large amount of it does. However, tourism is not the only important aspect of Kenya's economy. Agriculture is also extremely important to the country, and along with forestry and fishing, it makes up roughly 24% of the country's GDP, as well as 50% of revenue from exports. Kenya is the world's third largest exporter of cut flowers, and Kenyan flowers make up 30 to 35% of flowers auctioned in Europe. Approximately half of Kenya's 127 flower farms are located around Lake Naivasha, which is 90 kilometers northwest of Nairobi. Tea is a major cash crop that is grown in Kenya, and Kenyan tea is the leading foreign exchange earner for the country. Kenya is also the third largest producer of tea, only after China and India. Most of the tea that is produced in Kenya is black tea, and the tea is sold internationally through a public auction in Mombasa. Coffee production is also a significant contributor to the economy of Kenya. About 70% of Kenyan coffee is produced in small farms, and roughly 6 million Kenyans are employed directly or indirectly by the coffee industry. Kenya largely produces Arabica blend coffee, which is well known for its intense flavor, full body, and pleasant aroma with notes of cocoa that make coffee from Kenya one of the most sought-after types in the world. Interestingly, even though coffee is such an important part of the Kenyan economy, Kenyans for the most part don't consume a lot of coffee, preferring tea instead. Another super interesting fact about Kenya is that the first African woman to ever win a Nobel Prize was from Kenya, and her name was Wangari Matai, and I'm really sorry if I mispronounced that. She was a social, environmental, and political activist who founded the Green Belt Movement, which is an indigenous grassroots organization in Kenya that empowers women through the planting of trees. Eventually, the movement expanded throughout Africa and led to the foundation of the Pan-African Green Belt Network. In a nutshell, this project aims to form a green barrier to protect African countries in the Sahel and beyond from deforestation, desertification, water crises, and rural hunger, while providing jobs in rural areas and empowering women. For this work, as well as her contributions to democracy and peace, she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004. Something that I found really interesting when I traveled to Kenya is that plastic bags are illegal in the country. If you're caught with a plastic bag, you could be faced with a $500 fine, and in national parks, all single-use plastic is prohibited. 
The reason for this is to protect Kenya's environment and biodiversity and indirectly its economy as well. I definitely think that when it comes to environmental protection, other countries could learn a lot from Kenya. So let me know in the comments which of these facts you found the most interesting and as always, if you like this video, remember to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and I'll see you in the next one.